Hi, good morning everybody. This is the Human Colony Saturday webinar. Today is January 7th, 2017, and we have a special mini channel panel edition this morning, which is very exciting because we have three people that are walking um, paths that seem to coincide in certain areas. So we're really blessed to have these people come together today. We have joining us today, Justin Arnott, Arnott? Arnett. I think it's Arnett. You bet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Will Mitchell from Reiki with Will and Wendy from Languages of Lights. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is super extra exciting because today we're actually going to be focusing a little bit, other stuff is probably going to come through, but definitely on angels and angelic guidance, angelic assistance, angelic communication, um, and some other awesome stuff. But really, um, it's time for all of us to understand that we have the power to protect ourselves, so we don't have to rely on others. Um, and we are able to speak with these beings just like our friends, because they're people just like us, they're just in a higher frequency bandwidth. So um, there's a lot of really cool stuff that I think is gonna come through today. So it's super exciting. So um, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're not gonna do a whole bunch of blessings beforehand. We're gonna have so much energy in here today. It's gonna like buzz everybody away. Well, not away, but <laughs> so let's, um, Let's actually just start. I think, uh, Justin, you said Prime Creator was looking to provide a blessing. So I think we can probably start with that. And then, Justin, you can just go right in and um, please bring through um, whoever you wish to. Before that, though, I just quickly will say, please, everybody visit humancolony.org to stay up to date on our current events, on our um, events that we're doing, as well as checking out our Facebook page. We have a Facebook page and a Facebook group, and the group is private, so you can post in there, and people outside of the group won't be able to see, so that's kind of nice. Um, for this information in particular, we're moving out of it, um, but it's exciting. So check us out on Facebook and also like, uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Human Colony 2, um, because this is where we have the larger hangouts, whereas Human Colony TV on YouTube is more um, for, uh, that's where we copy the events to. So um, with that said, I think those are all the, uh, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow Max is doing an interview with Human Colony with Elena Kopolnik, who um, was in the Secret Space program. And so she's gonna be talking more about her experiences and possibly her interactions with Dirk Bittner and Human Colony as well um, up in the colonies. So it's pretty exciting. So um, I, th and that will be at, I think it's 3 p.m. tomorrow. Um, the 8th of January. Let me just confirm that here because I don't want to say the wrong yeah, thing. That's, 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 that's 3 p.m. Yeah, Eastern. Eastern. Yes, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. He'll be interviewing her. So um, go to humancolony.org slash jump to be able to grab that participation link and uh, join in or watch. So with that said, Justin and Prime Creator, let's go right ahead. Thank you so much for joining. Shana can a hard conish when he had Hana can a hard horse or a horror. Many blessings on this wonderful day of the celestial solstice. Arricana could show on a hard rock on a rod or show on a hard and a can a hard record. I'll offer today's blessing when high angelic tongue are knocker a hor knocker a holler can a hor could show on a key. As the angels gather around for celestial solstice, they watch over us and give much energy and allow for many connections to be made. We offer openness to receive blessings from all of them and allow them to flow as we should connect with Gaia and all others. Much love is given to all. It bask in the energy of the celestial solstice. Invite openness to all. Good morning, as I see it is, as among many of you. 
I, today I would like to begin discussion about energy filters and then I will move into several other aspects. Being prime creator, I've been blessed with the opportunity to create many celestial bodies. My energy is given to create entities such as Gaia and your solar system along with many and all solar systems to give energy to one single being when capable of creating such infinite mass it would be detrimental to said person or insect or animal or however it may go so we use filters to give the energy equally we spread it down through the oversoul and through angels and down to you and then this way you're capable of using this energy and accepting this energy without causing harm to you this was our design and this is how it flows should you wish to share energy higher up it must flow in the same manner you can't just give energy back it must go through an angel through the oversoul and back we would love this cycle to continue it has been long since many have done the infinite sharing cycle connect with Gaia as much as possible for she will facilitate the proper grounding in which you require to pass the energy up higher also connect with Gaia because she requires your energy connect with her because you are children of her allow this to happen keep all blessings share all blessings what i want to say about this is gaia is changing her energy it is my will that she is allowed to have some modality of free will for many many years now she has been asking for help and has been receiving much she requires her children to help her as much as possible through the angelic filters we have been giving protection instruction should you wish to seek any of the protection instruction there are many amongst you who are capable of carrying angelic channels who can attune you to angelic and divine protection you are capable of carrying this energy you do not have to rely on others to do it for you you are capable of protecting yourselves from the most wicked that would cause any harm everybody is capable of this everybody is capable of speaking to higher self speaking to angels speaking to one another for this is the dissolve how to dissolve the barriers that have been set before you learn telepathy learn to speak with one another learn not to rely upon technology learn to lie on yourself and your connection with Gaia for it will allow much growth and many abilities to produce and proceed everybody is capable of such wonderful healing there are many wonderful healers amongst this panel today and amongst the group today so many are awakening to the abilities of healing and telepathy telepathy will facilitate much if you are seeking higher abilities i strongly suggest that you attempt new healing modalities old healing modalities attempt to heal your food attempt to heal one another share love share energy for it is easy to give and most blessed looked upon those who do if you do not feel that you are capable of healing perhaps look to the light languages as many are seeing wonderful breakthroughs with the white light languages this is also a wonderful form of telepathy 
Now, both healing and telepathy are seen as a form of conscious channeling. However, all channeling happens all the time. There is no difference between conscious channeling and subconscious channeling, channeling while you are asleep, or even the trance channel. It is all a matter of How do you say what you're willing to do, what you're willing to allow to happen? Understand that there are varying degrees to channeling. However, it is very simple. You just allow it to happen. Healing, speaking light languages, all leads to telepathy. And it's probably the easiest way. However, none of this will happen so long as you do not have a strong connection with Gaia. Her energy is fluctuating so much right now. The energy cloud is thick with the fifth dimensional energies, replenishing her energy meridians and allowing her energies to move through the fourth and fifth dimensions and facilitating much of what has never been able to happen before. With that being said, I have had chosen sons and daughters upon the earth who have been able to tap into these energy meridians and have been able to do miraculous healings and do stories of legend because they were able to ground themselves properly and allow themselves to harvest Gaia's energy and allow the cycle to continue. Should you wish to follow the path of previous ascended masters, you must be able and must be willing to share energy with Gaia. Harvest, give, share. As her energies increase, so will yours. For instance, right now, the fourth dimensional energy is so strong that many of you could do the same type of healings as Yeshua when he incarnated. Some of you are capable of doing them to even a far greater extent than what he could ever facilitate. We're seeing this more and more. There are many of you amongst this community that are capable of doing this. Believe in yourself. Believe in Gaia. Believe in your connection. This is your birthright. You were chosen to do this. You were chosen to help Gaia ascend. You are here to help. She is here to help you understand that her incarnation is far more important than any one person. All people, all creation are one. You are all important together, not by yourself. Seek togetherness through connection with Gaia. <sighs> protection yes archangel gabriel has written a glyph and has given it to several in the community already please reach out to these people allow yourself attunement to the glyph it will allow wonderful connection to gaia it will allow you to protect yourself in ways that you cannot imagine it will facilitate wonderful energy flow and allow you to assimilate energy from the celestial solstice and from the ascension of Gaia and her energy meridians. Please understand that this type of energy transfer may be new to many. And when you do this, it may make you feel awkward. It may make you feel orgasmic accept the energy it may not be pleasant at first it may hurt slightly it will not last you will not stay in a state of orgasm forever however the duration can be long many enjoy the energy of channeling because it causes the body to tingle in such a way that is very pleasing 
any that channel would tell you the same how though some are more humble than others ed would not state it so when channeling it is important to focus breath the breath is what allows much of the facilitation of the energy transfer for that's all it is facilitating energy transfer become a conduit of energy allow yourself to allow the energy to flow when you feel the energy slipping ground yourself to gaia facilitate the breath harness it properly you are all beings of the heart let go of your intellectual intuition and grasp harvest the heart energy if you feel your connection leaving focus your breath through the heart and push it outwards and it will allow you to keep the connection stronger it will allow and facilitate much to happen by grounding gaia and allowing energy to flow through the heart it will produce new abilities you will be able to harness old abilities and see much spiritual growth within the spiritual sciences understand that not everybody around you will be comfortable with this not everybody will be accepting that you are a student of the spiritual sciences this is fine they must be allowed to walk their own path they must be allowed to change on their own time do not feel it necessary that you have to change anybody only offer help to those who are willing to accept it offer help and energy to everybody equally whether they accept it or not is up to them give as much love and energy as possible to all and allow them to make their own decisions stay strong on the path of light for it is very bright and if you are blinded by the path do not point your eyes away look directly at it and keep to walk walking towards it do not veer from the path many of you are well on your way to many wonderful things please walk the path help each other help gaia through helping each other you will help gaia she loves you very deeply i love you all very deeply so many things to discuss twin flames the understanding of twin flames has been convoluted by the spiritual community for there's so many different understandings so i will talk about souls and how they fractal and how they connect when you are born under an oversoul you would be placed several branches away from the main limb i will use the tree of life analogy because it is what this filter seems to understand best and many seem to understand this analogy if god over soul source was a tree it would be a marvelous and all standing tree your over soul would be one of the main branches you are one of the leaves on one of the third level branches if you have been graced with higher energy perhaps you are a leaf off of the main branch this branch is considered to be the oversoul branch if you are an ascended master you will be a leaf on the main limb if you facilitate energy such as healing and so on and so forth chances are you remain on one of the second limbs and as many people reside on the third limb they all facilitate energy transfer 
and they're all capable of wonderful things. However, their connection will not be as strong because they are not as close to the main limb, to the main trunk of the tree. Those who have stronger connection are because they're being fed more energy because they are closer to the trunk. Through them, through angels, you can change your position on your limb. You are not a fixed leaf at the end of your branch. You can slide amongst your branch and become closer to the trunk. Not everybody is willing to go through this process. It is not always pleasant and it can cause some pain, especially emotionally. You will experience things that many will not. Becoming a beautiful, empathic person capable of unconditional love means that you will feel other people's emotions. When someone is angry, you will become angry. When someone is sad, you will become sad. You will feel the emotions around you. You do not need to fear this. All you need to do is accept it and allow it to flow. Sharing is one of the most wonderful things that humanity is capable of doing, and it is not doing it nearly often enough. As the term twin flame has come about, any one soul is capable of having several incarnations at the same time. Now, with that being said, typically when a soul fractals and is born, the twin flame or the energy of its brother or sister will sit directly beneath that leaf and feed it energy from the over oversoul. It will be its partner, its friend. And very rare do they incarnate at the exact same time. Now it is possible that this small droplet of water inside the branch is feeding this leaf, that more water would follow behind it and push it further down the branch where it finds its own place to find seed and incarnate as a leaf as well. Now, this is where you get the idea of a soulmate or a twin flame where two fractals of the same soul happen to share an incarnation on the exact same plane at the exact same time. It may not always be at the same age. It may be a child and a parent. It may be a friend. It is not always a partner. However, should you be fortunate enough to find that same incarnation of your fractal in the same life, consider yourself blessed for you share incarnation with your own self. Now, with that being said, everybody is one. However, that line of the soul is special to you because it is how you are connected to Oversoul. It is entirely possible for you to have multiple incarnations at the same time, different planets, different timelines, different celestial bodies, different gathering of celestials, galaxies, as you call them, all at the same time. And you will share especially strong connections to people from that origin. Reach out to your fractal brothers and sisters. Share energy. Share information. As your connection with Gaia strengthens, reach out to your fractal brothers and sisters, your twin flames. Now, 
with that being said, that there it is possible that there are multiple incarnations of fractals at the same time. The term twin flame might not be the best term for it. You're sharing a soul connection with other beings, other incarnates. I do not know how you would wish to term it. And I'm interested to see how it will be termed. And it, should you find a beautiful incarnation and share a wonderful connection with them, don't feel bad because it is not your twin flame or it is not your fractal brother or sister but rejoice that you have found somebody that you can connect with and enjoy your time with them as much as possible. It is not necessary to find a twin flame in order to find true love. True love is possible in so many, many, many ways. Do not be searching for a soulmate. Search for a beautiful companion who understands you and would more grow with you for this is really true love when different souls can connect and find common ground. Now, with that being said, if you are fortunate enough to find a fractal brother or a sister and you should fall into intimacy, Consider yourself extremely fortunate, for it does not happen often, but it does happen, and it is occurring more and more as the wonderful incarnates who return to help Gaia find their path. Many of them seek to walk the incarnation on Gaia once more. It brings me much warmth to understand that so many are willing to help her as she ascends and as she feels the energy flow from the wonderful celestial solstice and from the ascending energies around her at the moment. Understand that this is partially my gift, not to humanity, but to Gaia. And through this, you will feel many new abilities awaken do not reach out for a twin soul reach out for a companion reach out for friends share as much energy as possible with everybody share love i would beseech anybody who is sharing negativity to look inward and to find a better path you are not better than anybody else. You are not on a higher pedestal. Even those who are close to becoming ascended masters should never consider themselves higher than anybody else or consider that their light is stronger than anybody else. Your light is one with me. Consider yourself fortunate that we all share the exact same light. Your light is as strong as anybody else, even should feel incredible shame. Share only love. Do not cast a shadow on anybody this is wrong only look to the light for it will devour the darkness Do we have any questions? Um, I have not seen any questions so far. Um, 
Yes. Yes, Kina. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hi. Go right ahead. Okay. I would like to know uh, the archangel. If one day we all will be the higher self of someone else. It is entirely possible. How does it say? Not ever. One more time, please. How long does it take? I didn't understand the second question. How does we have to do for reaching this uh, higher self? Um, 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 I don't know. Uh, do you understand? You, yes. Now, what you need to understand is to become a higher self. This is a soul connection. You are already connected to your higher self in all of your fractals. And therefore, you are already connected to your higher self. And by being part of your higher self, you will become your higher self of any fractal that should follow in your soul line after this incarnation when you rejoin source and you find your way back to your soul branch and you're feeding all of your other brothers and sisters everybody will feed from your energy you will share all of your encounters with everybody should you decide to follow that path it is entirely possible that Anybody who is incarnated on earth will not decide to follow this path. Some of them become stuck. They become a splintered spirit or a ghost because of fears, because of inclinations to stay, a child, a piece of property, something that they feel that they need to guard understand that you do not require guarding anything you do not require to stay any longer than your incarnation live your life to the fullest extent and push yourself back to source when you leave this incarnation go back to the light always follow the light by living your incarnation to your fullest you will do your soul much honor and by returning to source you will one day become the higher self of somebody further down your soul line it is inevitable however it may take much time for you to return to source often when people pass they spend time with soul family, with soul friends, with friends from previous incarnations. Sometimes it takes much energy to return back to your branch. However, there is no such thing as time. It just is the cycle. Do you understand? Yes. Beautiful. Yes, thank you. Nice welcome. Hi. Hello. Hi. I, I've, I've got a question on behalf of Amber. Amber. Please continue. Amber wants to know, um, I've actually, she said we're sisters as well. You are sisters? Yes. Me and Amber. I found her with human colonies and we found each other again. And you are fractal she, sisters. Is this what you're fractal sisters. Way. How beautiful for that. you. It's so beautiful. But she's ever so worried right now. She's worried about her job. And she's asked me to ask you about her job. You know, she has a very big job. And she feels slightly powerless in the physical. And she's asked me to say, what a... In the body she's in, in the physical, she feels powerless. She doesn't know what she's meant to do with this body in the physical regarding her job. 
and and she's feeling lots of um confusion about what's happening or Gaia at the moment regarding you know FEMA camps and world crisis and possible earthquakes and things like of that nature and she's ever so worried about her job in the physical how would she be able to help the souls on the planet how can we as sisters help I would begin with connection to Gaia mm -hmm. definitely seek out any of the people capable of connecting you with Gabriel so that you may receive attunement to the defense and to the stronger connection with Gaia. Assimilate as much energy of the fifth dimension as possible. It will awaken new abilities and allow you to see much more. It will allow you to connect with higher self and with each other on a much higher level. As for any job that is clinging to the monetary system, I would state that you should do whatever you need to do in order to live on Gaia. A job is not your life. Connecting to other people should be your utmost importance. If she's not capable of connecting in a way that she feels that she's help helping, perhaps yes. she should find a different job. Yes, she's going to be listening to this um, webinar later. So when she plays back the video, she'll um, play back exactly what you've said and and take it on board. She's just slightly confused about her physical abilities on Gaia with this particular job role she has, where she helps people find their gods and inner goddesses in them. Is that right? As being a, a member of the spiritual community and the energy sensitive community, helping people is a wonderful thing and allowing them to connect to their higher self is an absolutely wonderful thing. Now, to beseech anybody who is attempting to help anybody else, you must understand that if they are not willing to help themselves, then they cannot be helped. They must fully accept whatever help you are trying to do. If there's any inclination of doubt whatsoever, she will not be able to help them. I see. Yes. Now, all she can do is everything that she is capable of doing. If she is doing her very best, then that is beautiful. And she should not feel that she's inadequate to yes. the capability. Now, as far as reaching out further, I would ask her to ground properly. Yes. Be, be sure that she is free of any negativity. Spiritual connections are very real. They connect to property. They connect to person. They connect to animals. And they can offer immense negativity because there's so much anger and doubt that caused that spirit to stick around. Yes. Now I do not see a specific attachment to her. That's good. Yes. But perhaps to her property. Oh. There I are many amongst this community that are capable of removing said attachment yes this will also help her facilitate a stronger connection to gaia i am i don't know if this helps um i don't eat any meat i don't eat animals i'm vegetarian and i How don't I, because i can't i i love animals the creation is just beautiful and people who eat animals i don't um, dislike them but um, I just feel I couldn't eat the soul of an animal because I feel that animal's pain. I feel that animal's love. I feel everything that animal's gone through, you know. And and I feel personally as a vegetarian, um, and I'm proud that I don't eat meat. And how, well, I'm trying to get my, how I meant to say this, Amber still eats meat. Is that quite bad for her? 
This is a very large topic, which I could speak about <laughs> at length. I'm so sorry. There's no reason to feel sorry. Please do <laughs> not feel sorrow in any way. Only feel <laughs> happiness. Release all negativity. Yeah. Now, the main, the main issues with industrial farming is that they're not done humanely. They have mm -hmm. animal stacked upon animal and they share each other's fear. They see the knife coming. They don't eat proper nutrition. When the emotion of the harvest heightens the animal's adrenaline and all other emotions, the emotion of being harvested can be passed on to anybody who consumes it yeah. if if the harvest happens humanely if that animal is nurtured from birth and is given the utmost respect daily and fed high quality nutrition and when harvested, it is asked permission to allow it to be harvested. And it is done so in a humane manner that causes the least amount of pain to the animal so that there is no transfer of bad emotion whatsoever. Yeah. Only in this type of a situation would I consider this to be a good transfer of energy. <clears throat> yeah. Now, while I'm highly appreciative of your decision of living a vegetarian life, understand that the way you should be looking at your f nutrition is on a stress level. Mm. Even plants can feel stress from poor harvest you can feel stress if they're not asked permission to be gathered if they are harvested improperly they must also be shown the proper humanity to raise them properly and to be harvested properly you can get just as sick or feel the stress of the harvest just as much from any plant as you can from any animal. And while I appreciate that you love animals, I would <clears throat> ask that you also show the same appreciation to your food. Yes. In many, many years past, harvesting food was a way of life. Everybody yes. shared such beautiful connections with all forms of nutrition. And I would see it so once again. If you wish to have a higher connection, you must seek a lower stress diet. Seek farmers who raise their animals on a low stress level as possible, who gather their crops on a low as stress as possible. This is why many people have many issues with wheat because it is harvested by extremely large and loud machines that pound it into the ground along with any other small animal that happens to get crushed beneath any part of it. The stress of the harvest forces itself into the wheat, which was not meant to be harmful. Mm. It is only through the, the manner in which it is gathered, which it spreads so much stress to much of the people if you find that you're having any form of difficulty with any type of food, it's probably because it wasn't harvested properly. This information is amazing. Everybody needs to hear this because there's not a lot of people know about this and farmers. And unfortunately in this, where in the world we live in today, people are not doing that. They are, mass producing plants, mass producing animals, just absolutely killing off Gaia. And it's, it's, it's not nice. It's not nice at all. So thank you so there much. There are many that have, you're, you're very welcome.
there are many that have studied different forms of social construction. I would ask you to look towards the Venus Project and anybody who has studied those types of reconstructing society where you share the land, you don't yeah. live on it. If you were to spread out instead of packing yourselves into massive cities where it is very difficult to deal with the waste, if you spread out properly, you can equally share the land with your vegetation and with your farming. Mm. However, this will be very difficult as the elites see this as a giant loss of control. If each city were to grow its own crops and harvest its own sustenance mm. and treat its waste properly, it would not have to contaminate Gaia with any of its waste and could reuse it properly. I wish we were doing that. I really do, with all my heart. We're I moving towards that. We are moving towards that. That's good. I would just It's just a slow process, but at least, at least you're, we're moving towards that. Yes, and staying positive and keeping the focus is really key. Focus on a, what we want to see. There was another part to the question which I did not answer, and it escapes me at the moment. Um, she asked. She asked about. I've got to think now myself. Fear. I would say that she should not fear anything. Release this emotion. That's right, Amber. Uh, she's yes. about new possibilities and about new energy cultivation. Do not. Yes, now I remember. <laughs> She has quite a bit of ego when it comes to her job. Release the ego. Yes. Only through proper grounding and humbleness will you actually be able to reach out. I would also say that she needs to release the emotional attachments that she has. She has some um, hurt in her life that she needs to forgive. Yes. Once she heals this hurt, she will be able to find a higher sense of humbleness, which will allow her to dissolve the ego and allow her to help as many as possible. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm blessed that you answered Amber's questions and she sends her blessings too. And blessings for answering my questions. Thank you so much. Blessings to you. Love you. Love you as well. Much love for all. Thank I, you, Maria. I would like Thanks. to touch it. I would like to touch a small amount upon spiritual connection. It is long been an issue on Gaia, and it does not happen in very many places at all. For some reason or another, people get stuck here is seen as a negativity prison. They get in this downward spiral. They get connections to property, to pieces of land, to buildings, to other people because of fear of the unknown, fear of passing, fear of returning to source. Understand that this is a natural process. You have nothing to fear uh, past your incarnation. You are not an incarnate having a spiritual experience. You are a spirit having an incarnate experience. You are here for a very short amount of moments. Enjoy all of them to the best of your ability. Do not allow yourself to stay around. Live your life to the utmost fullness Share it with as many people as possible. Be as bright a light as you can be. As bright as anybody else. And find yourself back to source. Now, with anybody that has fear in their lives, whether from the trauma of passing or the fear of leaving behind a loved one 
or fear of leaving behind possession, I would ask that they would release the fear and embrace the love. As Gaia's energies ascend, everybody must understand that any trapped spirit upon Gaia will ascend with her, as all beings upon Earth ascend with her. There are many second dimension attachments that are gaining third dimension type of capabilities. You will have physical interactions with trapped spirits. Be accepting of this type of energy and compassionate towards them. Understand that they require the utmost love and compassion to return to source. Anybody is capable of negotiating spiritual harmony. What happens when a ghost is formed or when a spirit fracture occurs? I will revert back to the tree of life analogy. The leaf breaks away from the stem and falls from the branch and the stem remains planted in the branch. The spirit does not fall whole to the ground to re-nourish the tree of life. Anybody is capable of spiritual harmony, reconnecting the leaf to the stem so that it may fall whole. Many shaman do this. This is their purpose, to make sure that the leaf breaks away from the branch properly. There are also many shaman who make sure that the leaf re-enters the branch properly. So they help life incarnate and they help life back to source. It's long been overlooked that shamanism is of witch doctors. It is not so. They are some of the most loving people on earth and capable of incredible things. Should you be aware of any negative energy, there are many amongst you who are capable of teaching you how to deal with spiritual harmony, allowing that trapped soul to rejoin source. Please understand that this is work of the heart and you will require your own defense protection so that it will not attach to you for light workers are often the most open and susceptible to spiritual attachment. Please understand that there should be no fear in this only love, only love. Please reach out to the people in your community who are capable of releasing spiritual attachment. Understand that it is something that you can be protected from and you are capable of protecting yourself from it. As their energies ascend, they will become more aware and be seeking return to Gaia for they understand through self-awareness that they are not where they are supposed to be. However, many of them do not understand how to leave their attachment, how to let go. It is very, it is of the utmost heart that you must give them this deepest compassion in order to allow them to release. Understand that communicating with them will allow you to do very much and help them release their attachments. Thank you, Prime Creator. I would also like to state that you're very welcome. I would also like to state close to 60% of people have some form of a spiritual attachment and do not know it. It is very real. The 
emotional connections, the emotional ties that they bind to bodies can manifest physical, medical implications. Shamanism is revered to as, revered as spiritual, emotional seeds. These seeds often lead to things such as leukemia, cancer, cysts, stones in the body. It is emotion manifesting physically. Release all emotion. Get rid of these ties. Take out your garbage. Do not allow your emotion to set deep roots and grow seeds that will cause you physical harm. If you have an emotion, some deep-seated emotion that does happen to grow deep roots, you will need a powerful healer to remove them. There are many healers that are capable of removing these emotional binds. Even amongst this community, if you feel that you cannot let go of certain emotional seeds, seek their help. They will be more than willing to assist. There are many that are willing to assist. I would like to ask something about that quickly before we move forward. Please do. The um, session that I had with Justin, um, working with the angels, was extremely life-changing for me. And so I was hoping you could touch quickly on um, attunement, angelic attunement for self-protection and um, the ability for us to spiritually protect ourselves and take care of ourselves in that way. Seeking attunement for anything is seeking permission to use a specific form of spiritual magic. Whether it is from a healing modality or from any form of defense or any form of magic, anybody is capable of doing incredible, incredible feats. Without attunement, you will be at less than 20% of the potential on which you're capable of reaching. 10 to 15%. The odd person who has incredible energy will seek 20%, which in its own right is incredible. When you become attuned to healing modalities, to defensive magic, you are receiving written permission from the creators that created that form of healing or defensive magic. They quite literally write the runes on your body. You become a doodle pad of angels and they allow you to seek the full capability of each of the symbols, each of the healing modalities. Some of them do not require symbols. Some of them wrap you in color. Some of them share the color with you. Some of the symbols are geometric in nature. It is not always on the surface. Sometimes it is embedded into the flesh. Sometimes it is breathed into the lungs. Sometimes it is seated in the brain. These magic or spiritual runes, spiritual glyphs, become part of your soul, become part of your incarnate. Your light body will carry these symbols for the rest of eternity. It is a sign that anybody that sees you will know that you carry wonderful light and capability 
and just by a glimpse, they know that you're capable of wonder. Now, you don't share this in your incarnate body on the visual sense. Whereas if Gabriel were to write a rune on your body, you would not see it. You would definitely feel it upon being placed upon you. You might feel organs shift. You may feel heightened energy. You may feel kundalini rush from third eye to root. There's many things, many sensations that may come from it. But it is essentially written permission from the person that has written the glyph and allows you to have 100% use of it. Now, with ancient healing techniques, it is difficult to seek proper attunement because with each generation of attunement, it loses a small amount of its capability. So if you're receiving attunement from an eighth generation, Usui Reiki Master, it will not be as strong as if you were to receive it from Usui himself with the energy changing in and around Gaia, you are now capable of connecting with Usui himself and receiving attunement from Usui. You no longer need to receive it from a generation, 10 generations down the line. Once you are capable of these connections, or should you happen to seek out somebody capable of making these connections, you can receive the strongest attunements possible because you will receive them directly from the source of the magic, of the love in which they were all written. It is the wonder of sharing love that allows us to heal allows us to protect ourselves. Only through the heart will you seek proper attunement and will you receive it. If anybody decides that they would like to connect with Gaia on a stronger level, there are those among you who are capable of giving the Gabriel attunement and I strongly suggest that all of you do so for the energy that is around her at the moment and from the celestial solstice can be harvested and will facilitate many new abilities and will allow the abilities which you already possess to shine even brighter. Gabriel has also given instruction on proper energy harvesting through facilitating breath properly so that you may harvest the energy of the solstice and of Gaia without harm and to see the best results from this to help with wonderful, wonderful growth. Please seek them out. They will help you. Yes, I can attest to that personally. It is extremely, extremely powerful. Um, and so we do have a few questions coming in. We're going to move to the other questions. So everybody just hang on tight here. But this is something that really needs to be discussed right now. So just very quickly, um, there are questions coming in regarding the, the runes. So it from what I understand, sometimes they can be like what we understand Reiki symbols to be. So could you elaborate on that a little bit more so we have clarity on what you mean by these symbols and runes which we can use in these different things? They've been called many different things and by many different civilizations. Glyphs, runes, chevrons, they're just names. It is a, a magical symbol which facilitates the magic, which facilitates the healing, 
It allows you to focus a certain intention. Although sometimes intention is strong enough. Although as you were speaking of Reiki symbols, I'll use this analogy with, let's say, Chokurei. Chokurei is a wonderful symbol that allows you to focus energy in a very specific place. Before you're allowed to use this at 100%, you will have this glyph drawn on your light being, on your very soul, so that you will carry it with you for all time. If you have received attunement to this in a previous incarnation, you can use it without receiving attunement in this incarnation. However, it does not hurt to share energy. If you do not know that you have received attunement to this, that is fine. Receive it again. See the power unlocked again. If it is what you require to set the intention, then do so. If you do not have memory, seek a new memory. With the runes or glyph or chevron or symbol, there's nothing to be feared. It is written permission to use it. Once you're capable of using it, wonderful things will happen. Even without seeking attunement, you will still be able to use 15, 20% of its capability. And you should do so. If you feel that you are capable of healing somebody, you are capable of healing somebody. Share the love. Seek the attunements. Be the best healer you can be. Be the best and strongest light that you can be. Thank you for um, elaborating on that. Um, it's so powerful, and I did physically feel uh, this when it happened for me. So it's it's really cool. Um, we also had some questions coming in about basically how we're able to um, go about receiving these attunements. So I know for a fact, because I had it done, Justin Arnett, who is speaking right now, who is channeling, um, is able to provide these attunements for people. Um, are there different, there's typically different levels of these attunements, correct? How does that work? Depending on what you are learning, there are different levels for attunement. For instance, this wonderful conduit is working on bringing back many of the ancient healing modalities. He has been attuned to nearly 500 different healing modalities and will soon be bringing them to public. There are others amongst you who have attunement to a wonderful healing modality known as Aquarian Fire. The Aquarian Fire is one of the strongest passive healing abilities, modalities that are capable of being wielded by man. You should definitely seek out anybody capable of giving attunement to these beautiful healing modalities. Help as many people as possible. Justin is more than willing to help anybody who's willing to receive it. If you wish to become a unity shaman, he will certainly help you along this path. This has been the term given to his healing modality as he is receiving healing modalities from across the galaxy. Nobody seems to be remembering their experiences on the colonies, so he's going to bring it to the public. He's going to bring all base healing modalities to the public. There is so much ego wrapped up in shamanism. We are the strongest healers. Look at our healing line. It's absolute farce. Although they are incredible healers and capable of many things, it's disgusting the ego that is wrapped up in it. You should feel shame for not sharing it as a pure healing source, as healing from source. Allow the healing to be of only love, only of compassion, and you will be able to do wonderful, wonderful things. Do not become the egotistical healer. 
it is my power. This is my healing. It is all from your higher friends. It is from source. Make sure that it is credited to them that you are able to facilitate wonderful healing with their help. If it makes people uncomfortable, it is safe to say that you are a healer with help from higher friends. And many will accept this. Even if they are slightly uncomfortable, if they are seeking your help, they will accept it. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we do have quite a few questions pouring in. Just a heads up for the public. Um, we are letting Justin continue a little bit longer today because there is information, as you are hearing, that needed to come through. Um, so this is a little bit of an unusual channel panel. Just um, thank you, everybody, for sticking with us. We love you so much. Um, we have a question from Michelle. Good morning, Prime Creator. Good morning. How are you? Um, very well today. Thank you. That's wonderful to hear. Um, so I, the uh, descriptions you gave at the beginning uh, were really helpful for me. I'm a visual learner. And so I wondered if you could create a word picture for me about um, the idea of, uh, OK, I understand about channeling specifically um, as in like I am currently I, I do the toning and I do the healing and I speak languages um, but you're a very wonderful conscious channeler but I am just beginning the idea of allowing and if I could see it as a picture I think I could maybe quit trying to block it my brain I don't really know the mechanics of how that works or how I can allow more um, your issue is with your facilitation of grounding and with your energy flow so could you explain maybe what that looks like for me by grounding to Gaia this will allow you to flow energy from your root to your third eye, from your third eye to your root in a cycle, back and forth, allowing it to flow such as a Kundalini effect. Now, when you're allowed, when you allow yourself to flow this energy properly from the third eye to the root and back up through the heart, you will be able to focus it to the heart. You are a heart being. Stop letting your head get in your way. Focus your energy from your third eye to your heart, from your root to your heart, and push it outwards. This will allow okay. you, this will allow okay. you to facilitate many things. Justin can elaborate far more about this. Seek his help. He will help you facilitate proper energy harvesting and allow you to push through this blockage that you have. You also need to release any harm, any fearful thoughts. They may be standing in the way of your energy flow. Let go of all negativity, harvest the energy of Gaia. Allow the love to push through and you will see your blocks pushed aside. Well, you say it is easy to say, let go of your fear. It is a different matter of the how. Because <laughs> sometimes they think they're very subconscious. They can be. They can be. Everybody must release in their own way. Everybody must find a way to forgive themselves. Forgot, find a way to forgive anybody that has caused them wrong. 
everybody must seek this forgiveness on their own terms. You can be shown the way. You can be shown the path. It is up to you to walk it. Only through the purest heart will you be able to facilitate wonderful things. And you're so close. Your conscious channeling is beautiful. Allow your tone to ring. Allow all of the beautiful languages that you speak to flow through this connection and through your healing, you will find deeper purpose and deeper connection to your higher self. Just allow it to happen. Let go of all negativity. Embrace only positivity and love. And I realize, okay. I realize that it is a difficult task in releasing any negative emotion. However, through releasing it, you will find much enlightenment. I have a follow-up question on that, just very quickly. Is Michelle finished? Um. I wonder if you could just give me a visual of what you have been attuned to allowing would look like allowing because when it happens for me I try to visualize I keep I keep only hearing the word allow 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 but I don't see like a, vis a visual facilitate like, the breath facilitate the breath when you're hearing allow, 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 focus your breath to your heart. Tighten the solar plex. Okay. Push the energy from your root to your heart. Feel it being pushed outwards away from you. Like a Care Bear beam <laughs> from your heart. Outwards. Okay. Focus the energy from your third eye down to the heart and out. You've been attuned to Aquarian fire, have you not? Yes. There is a wonderful energy transfer facilitated in this modality that looks similar to a figure eight. It flows from the head to the heart, outwards down to the root and up to the heart and outwards and back up to the third eye this is very similar to the healing to the energy harvesting that is given by gabriel mm -hmm. almost identical it is only missing the part of pushing this energy outwards through the heart at the exact same time once this is achieved many many new things will be unlocked facilitate the breath facilitate the heart energy okay i understand thank you that was perfect i'm glad i could um, help i just wonder if you could you know what i'm just gonna let somebody else go thank you much love to you much love to you michelle mm -hmm. keep walking your beautiful path thank you so much um i i know we're we're getting close on time here and we do have two more channelers but um we i have do not wish questions. to take the i do not wish to take the spotlight from these beautiful people they have wonderful messages to bring as well if the questions are brief i will gladly answer them but i do not wish to step on their time Let's do one more question from um, Angie, um, and then we will move forward with uh, Will. Angie, are you able to unmute? Yeah, I, uh, Hi. I, I'm not going to be able to talk. Uh, um, I want to come up. <sighs> I love you so much. I love you much but, as well. 
It's hurting. I don't want to feel all this pain anymore. I'm sending you love right now. Accept it. Open your heart. Is it not too wide already? <laughs> Find the strength. Calm yourself. Why do I feel the old earth pain? <laughs> Incarnation is painful. Keep me up at night. <laughs> I just need some rest. <laughs> Yes, I see it. Accept the feeling. There are many beautiful long distance channelers, long distance healers that are capable of helping you. Reach out to Will, reach out to Jim, reach out to Justin. They are capable of helping you. Breathe in deep. Thank you. Breathe in deep. Allow the breath to facilitate healing. Open your heart. Deep. Push that energy deep to the root. With every breath in, pull energy to the third eye. With every breath out, push energy to the root. Allow it to flow through all your kundalini. They're wide open. Stop allowing yourself to feel this terrible pain. Accept the healing. Understand, understand that pain is part of incarnation. It's what allows us to remember we are alive. You are alive. However, you do not have to live with this. There are options there to relieve your pain. Open your heart. I have to, I have to learn how to control it or handle it, master it. You just show me how to do that in your spare time. I will gladly help you any way possible. Funny. Any way possible. Uh, just the other thing I was, um, while you were um, talking all this while, I was typing out a language in the side box. I would just like you to sort of tap into the energy and, and tell me what was going on. Was I translating you into my, the speaking in a parallel life with the dear felines? Just be. I'm trying to find this. Can you feel the calm now? Can you feel the peace now? Does it happen to the energy? Breathe it's deep. Totally I need you to calm yourself. Breathe deep. Find the strength. Allow the breath to facilitate. Allow me to connect. This is not the Syrian language, the language of Sirius. It is an ancient dialect. Feel blessed. 
that you're capable of doing such things. Your connection is strong. Find the strength within. Mm -hmm. Allow your connection to Gaia to happen. Harvest her energy. She can help you. Reach out to your friends in this community. They can help you. Look within, look to higher self. Allow your beautiful gift to grow. Through the light languages, you will see much growth. Allow the breath to facilitate energy transfer. Breathe deep. Every breath in, energy to the third eye. Every breath out, energy to the root. Allow it to flow through all of your chakra. Find the strength to walk the path. Wow, my ears are amplified. I can hear everything. You're so beautiful, thank you. Thank you for walking such a beautiful path. You are most welcome for the help. We love you, Angie. And <laughs> for all Thank who you. are going through these extremely intense energetic shifts, for all who are feeling the pain of Gaia and of others, there is assistance. You are not alone and you are able to receive help if you ask for it. You may reach out to anybody in this community, especially our wonderful channelers, as well as many others um, for assistance. Do follow your heart. Um, Prime Creator, we, um, is there, are there any last things you would like to say um, for the public, because I felt as though the explanation of the breath work was absolutely essential for our entire human collective to understand once again, because it has been lost in the ages. Justin has been given direction to share this with all who are willing to listen. Seek connection with Justin. He will show you the way. He can help. Anybody who is capable of carrying the frequency of Gabriel is capable of sharing this information. When you're facilitating the breath, every breath in, absorb energy from the root chakra, from Gaia, through all kundalini to the third eye with every breath out push energy through the third eye down to the root collect this energy from father sky with every breath in it flows from the root to the third eye with every breath out it flows through the third eye to the root. Allow the energy to move through the chakra. Once you are used or accustomed to the feeling of this energy, tighten the solar plex. Any energy that you store in the root, push upwards. Every breath in, push from the root to the heart. With every breath out, push from the third eye to the heart. Five breaths each way. Perhaps start off with 10 breaths from the third eye to the root, root to the third eye. And then once you've done each way 10 times. 
focus the energy down to the heart. One breath in, harvest the energy that you've stored in your root chakra and allow it to flow to the heart. With every breath out, allow it to flow from the third eye to the heart. See it push straight outwards. Empower your abilities, empower your defense. Allow it to breathe life into everything that you do. Share this energy with as many people as possible. And any person that you share energy with, make sure you break your bond when the sharing is complete. You do not wish to carry additional attachments, which is very important. If you seek further guidance with attunement to Gabriel's defensive glyph and harvesting Gaia's wonderful energy or harvesting energy from the celestial solstice, Justin can be contacted. He will help you. He is more than willing to help. Thank you so much. I will also provide Justin's email address in the description. You may reach Justin at goodtimesarni at gmail.com. Goodtimes, A-R-N-I-E, at gmail.com. Um, that is his email, and he is available for private sessions as well as attunements and other things. Um, and he has been guided to provide the uh, Gabriel's attunement for free because it is extremely important um, for those who wish to do so. So thank you, Prime Creator, for all of your amazing wisdom today. We are so, so thankful for you joining us. And um, I hope that everybody receives this information well. <laughs> Walk the blessed path of light and harvest the beautiful celestial solstice energy. Know that you are loved. You are loved by Prime Creator. Do not ever feel that you are left alone in the balance. I always walk with you. Your oval soul loves you. All of the angels love you. Do not be afraid to call upon them. They love you so much. Call upon the angels. It is your birthright to connect with them. It allows you connection to oversoul, to prime creator. Much love to all. Welcome back, Justin. Thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. We went over because it was necessary for this information. So I really appreciate you channeling for us today. Much love to all. Much love, Justin. Amazing. Okay. We next up have Will Mitchell, who is able to take it from here. Hi, Will. Hello. Gratitude to everyone. Wendy. You well, we can't hear you all of a sudden. Oh, how about that? She come on and ask you. That's how I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> what happened there? Gratitude <laughs> to all. She wants to know. To gratitude to God. Gratitude to Justin and uh, for channeling Prime Creator. Awesome messages. It was uh, it was epic. 
All thanks be to God. Uh, and thank you, Prime Creator, for the sales pitch of Aquarian Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Much appreciation. No tasua tasnia. Um Yeah, we were cheering. Yes. Um if you're curious about the aquarium fire, we are having a hangout. What is the aquarium fire? And you'll hear about uh the four levels of aquarium fire and experience it for yourself. You hear five ambassadors of the aquarium fire talk about it. January 17th. Speaking of sevens. What about sevens? Well, today's the seventh, one seven seventeen, and now we've got one seventeen seventeen. I was like, okay, this is really cool. And you're wearing seven seven. Oh, and yeah, Bree. So um, I was <laughs> laughing as she's telling me the date. I was looked down and I realized I have my jacket on with seven 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 on it. Lucky bunch. And what appears to be very close to the new blue, I will add. The new blue. New blue, which to me still in my mind represents the dawning of the Aquarian fire. Awareness. Awareness. Yes. Absolutely. Washika na osu yetataya hasana achika huta tisina wataya. Yeah, Toya. Is Katie with you? She is. Okay. Hi, Katie. Hi. I just, I just wanted to say hello so she could. I um. I wanted to introduce Katie too because she's been a big, very integral part of the whole Aquarian fire as well, and the energy. And as soon as I see her face, even my my <laughs> frequency just goes woo. Um. So I kept feeling like as well that. I wanted to say hello to Katie too, but I, I because I also I know that she's got a blessing in there today, so I wanted to make sure that you <laughs> give us today a blessing because you have been an inter integral part of my synchronicities within the last 24 hours, as has Angie. And I just can't even tell you guys. Everything that's transpired just in the last 24 hours has been just a wild little ride a big wild ride and so this segue and justin and all of this and the aquarium fire yes yeah, so um sorry will i just i didn't mean to interrupt you there i just wanted to well, i was just like wow this whole day has been amazing <laughs> the feeling is mutual sister <laughs> yes we we have 15 minutes and um the um yeah, the, about everything. Well, there's like some, okay. I have <laughs> had so much information come through the last couple of days and the last 24 hours. And let me just start really quick. For the sake of time, I met Justin just a short time ago and he came to me. He attended, um, he's watched many of our webinars, and uh, which I didn't know at the time. And he had attended a webinar that I had done. Um, I don't know, it's been, I don't know, a few weeks, anyway, months, um, on light languages. And he contacted me afterward, um, just a couple of weeks ago, saying that the angels had come to him and said he needed to talk to me. And we had an incredible hangout together. He channeled Gabriel with me. He brought in angel messages with me. We had an, just an incredible interaction. I mean, this whole day, I'm just, my frequency is just, woo, on fire. And because I can just feel the energy of that and today and this information and everything that has happened to me in the last few days. And I, I want to, I really need to thank a lot of people out there who are out there sharing their love and their, their expressions of joy um, Angie, the, the biggest thing that I've heard in the last 24 hours, messages from my angels, which are filtered through all of you. They're filtered through everything we receive in our synchronicities, through the 
the messages we get in, what videos we are, uh, our attention brings us to. Um, so many things have happened in the last couple of days as far as watching Angie's videos, Katie's videos, um, watching the being vulnerable. This is what the biggest message, and thank you, Katie, because it's like it makes me want to cry just thinking about how that is the key. We're so afraid to be vulnerable in front of one another. And once you can let that happen, the dam breaks loose and everything comes, you become the vibration that you now see that which you could not see the moment before because your tunnel vision didn't let you. It wasn't, it was there, we just couldn't see it. And when we become the vibration of that which we, which we desire, we automatically attract that which is going to feed our highest soul. And everything that, that Justin brought through is in that everything is in everything the answers are already there and we mistrust ourselves and when we become vulnerable we allow the information in we allow the energy and we allow the healing we allow the people into our lives that we wouldn't have normally allowed in because we weren't in the right vibration and i love I have, I've said this so many times, and Bree and I have talked about this, about blessing the food, blessing the farmlands, the, when you pass by, as you're driving by, bless the land, bless, purify the earth with your thoughts. When you see, when you pass a grocery store, send your energy to every piece of food in that place and say, Cleanse what we have done to you. Purify it in a way that it will bring the highest vibrational energy to everyone that touches it. When you are growing your food, just as they said, you, you speak to it. You, you, that is what our, that's what the shamans understood. They understood that when you bring that energy, that gratitude, there is nothing, nothing on earth in, in our existence, I don't believe, that is stronger than the power of gratitude. You, there is no room for anything else. And being in vulnerability is one of the things that has been one of my biggest mountains I chose to create for myself. The biggest one, because we don't want so we don't want somebody to know how we got there, but yet we need them to know how we got there because it's the same way they're getting there. And just this morning, I was typing in the side chat for Angie that I myself was just brought to a, a weeping state of gratitude from the energy that I was getting in just in preparation for this day, this hangout, in saying to them, bring to me, us, today, everything that we need to hear and see and feel and touch in our hearts. And the messages, the actual conversations I received, you can't even put that into words. And I was reminded I have a necklace too that um, I hadn't, I wasn't wearing at the time, and I put it on. They reminded me because it's my new beginnings with my with my lotus flower, and it says new beginnings on the back. And then my little celestial guide because it reminded me about the planets being in alignment. And um, thanks to um, some of Angie's videos that she also shared with Brad Johnson, and she she's gracious enough to share her most private sessions with everyone um, and reminds us about these symbols 
and, and Prime Creator talked about symbols and how many of us are receiving these symbols and that, that it's about connections. These are the connections, you know, and I, I just keep, I put them up because they're a story. They are, they are a way, a permission slip for us to become more aware of all that we are. They, every, all of us, as Prime Creator said, all of us are filters of source. All of you are filters of source to me, to each other. We are all filtering source because we create our own reality and we create by our frequency those that we rendezvous with the things that we see that we attract to ourselves that we need to feed our soul. And we are bringing that information to us constantly from source through each other. We are the filters of source. We are speaking the, the languages of our higher selves. Our higher dimensions, our higher dimensional beingness. Um, I was sitting here through the whole thing, just writing and writing and writing. I was getting tons and tons and tons of information, and yet reading it wouldn't even give it justice. And at some point, I'll figure out a way to, you know. But what I was reminded of was a moment a couple of days ago, just. Um, I was in the in my favorite forest <laughs> and I was sitting on, on a log as many of you know Bree knows probably which one <laughs> and I'm sitting on the log and I was given this vision from Gaia and I was I was feeling an, a myriad of emotions that were so vulnerable. I wanted to make a video, but I, they were so raw and vulnerable. I didn't even want the world to see me in that state. It was so raw, and I thought I can't possibly let the world see me in that state. And yet, what I was given was the most beautiful vision from Gaia immediately. It was as if I was given a slideshow of all of her, the earth, because I was freezing. It's been, it's, I'm north of Chicago and it is very bitter cold here right now. It's well below zero today and it was very cold and I was just feeling so cold and I was sitting there and I, needed to release energy i needed to receive energy i needed to recharge and she showed me like a like a movie fast forward when you see the change of the seasons and the crops and the trees and the the the, the sunsets and the sunrises and the mountains and she is so diverse in her beauty we go to the Grand Canyon. We go to the wonders of the world. We, we've barely even begun to discover her, her grandeur. Yet the things that we do see, each of those cycles is also the same cycles we go through. Every moment we learn something new. Every moment we become aware of something new we are as if are this we go through the same cycle she does the winter the bitter cold the wind the the desert heat the 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 green growth the flowers the smells the sunshine the sunsets that every time we learn something we go through the same exact type of cycles we're cold and we're hungry and we're starving, but then we flourish and we grow and we respond and then we forget. We forget what we went through and we do it again and again and again. And it's painful and she cries and we cry and she weeps and it's cold and it's hot and it's, and it's windy and it's 
the fire burning within her and burning with us and the understanding that we are every single one of these elements. We are every cycle she goes through, we go through every time we grow and expand. And yet look what we reap every single spring and summer. And then look what we said again in the fall. We are, we are magnificent mirrors of her. And she's a mirror of us. That's what we chose to do here. And we chose to raise and bring her to a new version of her and of us in a, in a fourth and fifth dimensional understanding. And that vision lasted, I don't know, maybe a minute. And yet, after that, I couldn't even possibly think of how I could express that in a video. How, and plus, the, I was too raw and too, the gratitude that I felt and then I understood, I saw it all the sacred geometry in the trees, in the plants, in the food we eat. Every time you cut an orange, every everything you do, we do is sacred circuitry, sacred geometry. Source is speaking to us in everything we do, every person we see, everyone we come in contact with is source talking to you and to me. And we need to understand and embrace and there is no need to compete or separate yourself. You need to expand who you are and let it out. Let her out. Let him out. Word. Let them out. And Angie, all of you who are out there, every one of you in this room is out there just expressing creativity and this was the other message creativity is the key creativity is source speaking through you however you whatever creativity means to you that is source speaking through you because you have a gift you have you are here, you exist, you always will, but your, your focus here is brief. There is no more time to waste our energy in things that do not belong in our lives, that do not serve us, that are not of our highest, purest good. And there is not one intention that, you can, that does not change everything. So when you ask, does this do this? Does this intention do this? Does this permission sit, this symbol, these stones, these gems, these gorgeous crystals that I hold in my hands that are part of Gaia? Yes, yes, yes. That's what the Aquarian fire is all about. Knowing that you're connected to everything, there is nothing you can't touch. There is nothing you can't intend with anything. That's what the age of Aquarius is here to tell us. It's here to tell us that this is the end of the old era. We are in the age of awareness. And that's what we're here to show each other, share with each other. You are aware. Now do something with it. It's time to make the action. Take, stop being afraid and just do the thing you need to do. Take your joy as far as you can take it. Thank you, Bashar. <laughs> Without expectation, moment by moment by moment. Without expectation. Once you throw the expectation there, there goes your boulder. Let the expectation go. And the other message I received was we have to, re re we realize now our ego was here to help us navigate through a three dimensional reality. It has a purpose and a job. I was given the knowledge that the, the, the message 
it is time to understand our ego is also raising its vibration. Your ego is also moving into the fourth and fifth dimension with you. You no longer need to hold on to the egoic three-dimensional constructs that prevented us from moving out of our out of our fear, which is nothing but an illusion that we set up for ourselves to conquer, to come here and cry together and say, you're not alone and the fire is burning within you. I need some water. <laughs> My lovely water. <laughs> well said. Notice how I was on mute. You were just rocking it. Absolutely perfect message, gratitude, sister. Make my heart sing every time you speak. Oh, <laughs> much love. Oh, my goodness. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. The age of Aquarius is where I becomes we, where we realize that we are no longer separate. We, <laughs> we become the awesomeness that we intended to be <laughs> where we see community rules. Um, gee, I, I forget what I wrote the other day. Um, but anyway, the, the, the community, we are a community. We are not separate from one, eno one another. We're not separate from Gaia. We're not separate from God. We are we have the divine essence in us and through us and allowing it to come through is what we teach in all levels of the Aquarian fire. And my journal, I'm looking down at my journal, you know, it, this really is it. You guys dance like no one's watching, sing like no one's listening, love <laughs> like you've never been hurt and live like there's no tomorrow. Be happy. Be happy in knowing you exist. Be happy in knowing you're breathing. If you're breathing, you need to be breathing. And when you're done breathing, you'll need to be somewhere else. And I really invite now, and, and in lieu of time, um, Bree, since you would have to leave first, I know that if you'd like to give a blessing too, so you're not in a big, big hurry. And I, we have another 15 minutes, and then I will okay, have good. To close so, up, so please take I'd your like time. I'd like to invite now any additional comments and blessings, and then um, I'd like to then close um, at the end with Katie and then Will and I with blessings at the end. So wonderful. Okay, so um, quickly, I did actually want to ask Will if he could please um, very briefly explain for people who are hearing about Aquarian Fire for the first time, yes, as it is please. very new to this planet, um, could you explain the brief story of how it came here as you were there <laughs> and um, kind of why it has been deemed as the um, most powerful healing modality available to us here. Well, I did not make that claim, but... Oh, sorry. Well, I heard, I thought I heard... Um, yeah, Prime Crater did. Much love. Um, The fire of God has been with us forever, since the dawn of time. And there is evidence of the holy fire that has manifested in the sacred writings throughout time. And it is what flows in through and around of all creation. It's what binds all that is. And The modality of Aquarian Fire came about with a conversation, an hour and a half long conversation on a, on a, on a long drive between Jim Charles and myself. And we were talking about 
how we weren't effectively utilizing the holy fire, the, the source energy that's within all of us and that exists everywhere, and how we weren't grounding it effectively, and how we weren't engaging the intention of the practitioner and the client as well. Because engaging the intention of the client for receiving healing is just as important because we all have free will. And engaging their intention and our intention as practitioners to allow the flow of energy, the unbiased, non-egoic flow of energy, which is why we are taught to set aside our personality and our ego so that we may be a clear channel to allow the divine flow through us into the client and the client engages their allowing and their intention to receive said healing, receive said energy, because healing comes in many, many, many forms. Um, healing can happen at the deepest levels of the soul and karmic release, spiritual attachments, anything. The holy fire is unlimited. It is. <laughs> The God energy. It is the God source. It is only limited by your free will and your belief. By that, why would you limit God's love for you? And we have developed the curriculum in Aquarian Fire to help belief systems to help grow awareness, expand awareness, mastery of awareness and intention, and, and then becoming one with all of creation. We're achieving unity at any point in any now, and what we perceive is now and what we perceive is time. And, and then being able to teach the Aquarian Fire Modality, after that, there is an infinite amount of perception out there. Whether it is illusion or just perception. Um, so come, <laughs> engage the Aquarian Fire on the 17th. It is my highest joy, Chikohoriata, to speak of God's love and <laughs> who and share with any and all. It comes out through light language, it comes out through my hands, it comes out through my heart, it comes out through my intention. And that's why I love light language because my ego and my my brain are not connected. It's my heart that is speaking And I allow the message and the love and the divine guidance to come through. Will, for people to get involved in the um, What is Aquarian Fire Hangout you're doing in 10 days on January 17th, are they able to go to your website, reikiwithwill.com? Where can they get involved? Uh, they can get involved. Um, Five ambassadors of the Aquarian Fire, Jim Charles, Will Mitchell, Brian Lucchese, Wendy from Languages of Lights, and Katie will be talking about Aquarian Fire, talking about different aspects of Aquarian Fire. Um, it'll be a two-phase hangout. Um, we are sharing the hangout um, on Google Plus at this point. It is already created on, on YouTube. And I think it's under AquarianFire1111 at gmail.com for YouTube. Um, there are not enough videos there yet to have a vanity URL. Um, and so we will be talking about Aquarian Fire and we'll be fielding questions in the second half. That is going to be epic. It is going to be epic. And I believe, when do you, do you remember the time? I can't find the hangout just yet. 
isn't that terrible? I'm like, I already forgot myself. Like, what time did we do that? 5.30 um, Central, maybe? We will put the link in the description. We'll make sure that it Certainly. gets in there. Yes. Remind so, me, Bree. <laughs> oh, 12.12 12 12 here. <laughs> my time, yes. anyway. So, um, Ray, uh, Will, you have your website, ReikiWithWill.com. I and do. Um, you do events and hangouts and meditations and things, which are awesome. Um, so please check out Will for information regarding not only the Aquarian Fire and the Holy Fire and Reiki in general, um, but also anything to do with um, light language and this other really fun information that we get to play around with here while we're on this planet. So um, also Wendy from Languages of Light. She has her YouTube channel. You can look her up, Languages of Lights, at YouTube. Um, she's going to be having a website up relatively soon here, as well as um, she has a Facebook page. You can find her on Facebook, Languages of Lights. And um, also, again, please stay up to date with humancolony.org events, because there you're able to um, find the events that we're doing. Um, and Justin, Justin Arnett is getting um, ready to get going here as well. Like I said, he is doing private sessions and um, he will also eventually be getting up a website and he has a YouTube channel under his name, Justin Arnett. So you can find him there on YouTube and he is um, also just kind of starting here. So we have a lot of really cool things in the works. All three of you are on the... Um, this path and it seems to me after talking to all of you and knowing you for a little while you're all receiving some shamanic information which is pretty interesting so we have a few minutes left here is there anything either you or Wendy uh, Will or Wendy did you want to speak on the shamanic path here I would like I would like to say first on that Bree thank you for bringing that up that yes I've been receiving a great deal of information regarding the shamanic idea and path and when I very first became aware of the emissaries the light collective and the light languages and and what it was that I had agreed to do if you will that was one of the first things that they told me was you are a galactic shaman now the word shaman already implies that because the job of the shaman is to allow themselves to enter the other realms of spirit and receive information and share it for the good of the community that is their job that is what they that is their high they have agreed to be a conduit and so much of the information that I've been receiving as of late with regarding, with respect to shamanism, especially anybody who comes and watches my videos, I, for, for those of you who don't know me, I've been now, I'm actually, what's the date, you guys? It's the 7th. Okay, coming up, I think in a couple of days, I think like the 16th or something, is the second anniversary of my YouTube channel, Languages of Lights. And... Part of this whole process has been about the journey of the shamans and understanding about bringing the information. It's about bringing it not only from the, 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 the ethers, the realms, the ancestors, whatever you want to call it, the understanding, but it's also about the connection to the earth and understanding how we can manipulate matter. And so it's, it's ancestral as well, as, as well as it is celestial. It's grounding. It, it's, as, it's this tie of earth to sky. It's this tie of the human, human understanding and their connection to all that is. And that is, isn't that really what we are all doing here anyway? And this is much of what I've been receiving is lately is that we are all becoming the shaman of the earth. We are the guardians of Gaia. We are the ones who have accepted this mission to come here and 
take care of her and make others aware of this process and our connection and why we need to do it and why is it important to you and to us as a collective and as a species. I truly believe that that is what we're learning when we are when we're learning about everything we are going to relearn alchemy this is a huge message i've been receiving we are going to relearn alchemy we are going to put things together we've never put together before and understand a new way of living like the new blue like the, the new blue new thank blue. you which so, you guys can look up it is literally a new frequency a new color of blue and it makes you go bzzz. i mean you just <laughs> when you look at it you, I, you know brie i almost wore that shirt today that's so hilarious that you said that um so if there's any other comments you want to make um will about shamanism in general i mean it's such a big subject we could go on and on but um there will be much and, more information but there's definitely a connection with the languages because of what I see, what I've received. It's been the channel to the channeling. The languages are just a way, like Will said, your ego is set aside and your mind and your logical thinking is set aside and all you are is a pure open channel of source. I, there is no other way to describe it. That to me is a, a huge element of shamanism. is chanting. We have always, for ages, haven't we? Since we've learned to speak, we have been chanting. We have been having song rituals because we know what it does to our vibration. It makes us explode. It, it, we know what it feels like to be in live music and the drums, the shamanic journey of the drum and how it teaches us to connect and breathe and stop the chatter and connect with the one pure source energy and i think it is a huge representation of the aquarian fire or the aquarian fire is a representation of that what do you think will i think it's time for blessings <laughs> because they're they're talking now, so I, I know it's like I hear going. Yet, and Bree has to push the stop button. Bree's got to go. So Bree, if you want to go first, go ahead, because I know you got it. Yeah, you see, sa sa so 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 ko so 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 antia sa ho so so oshi antia sa sa ho sa sa antia sa so ko so 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 antia sa antia sa sa ho so antia sa sa ha sa 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 so so. Hosasasiantiasa Let's wrap up a few more blessings and then we can close. And I did want to mention too that for uh, Human Colony, please visit. We're always looking for transcribers. We have a new huge Human Colony book project. We're looking for volunteers. We need people to transcribe who want to be a part of this epic book. It is a book that Max has come uh, um, into his awareness that he has been guided to write, and it's for young people. It is designed for young people who already believe but want to know more about human colony, about our extraterrestrial connections. So I invite everybody who is interested in any form of editing, transcribing your experiences, um, share information. If you see a video that you think would be appropriate as far as an explanation of a particular race, please send it to max at humancolony.org. So I wanted to throw that out there. It's a huge project that he's begun. And we're always, of course, accepting donations for the, the channel to keep things going. And private sessions we invite with Jim. So please visit your, your celestial families there and you will find us all there as well.
And um, with that said, um, I would invite first, if you guys don't mind, I would love to hear Katie and Will do a blessing. much gratitude and I too welcome you all to visit me um, galactic activations chakra opening up celestial guidance um, we've hardly got to touch on that today but that's okay uh, it was a wonderful day and I thank you all for being here you are all a blessing in my life I cannot tell you how blessed I am to be in this community with all of you and in this way and this now May you always I you. thank you my dear I love you Angie whether it is the angels, your extraterrestrial families, your hybrid children, your guides, your human ancestors that have transitioned are always with you. And as you raise your vibration, it is giving you the ability to see and feel and hear the messages clearly, purely, simply by asking. If only you knew the magic of intention. Everything you see around you is manifested by your intention. So in this age of awareness, you will understand this more and more, more purely and clearly, and you will see the synchronicities increase, the manifestations, the time becoming malleable, the power that you hold within you to bring this into this now, this here, this 3D experience. It is meant as the shamans to bring this information in allowance of enhancing the human experience. They are all gifts for you, simply for the asking. Simply ask with a pure heart and pure intention. For what is my highest good and how may I express my pure creativity in my highest joy? For as I serve my creation, I serve the all. And we are in service to each other. You are all messengers. We are all messengers of the one source, the one prime creator. 
The angels are the messengers, just as you are the messengers. Yes, Krishna. And we are one in this knowing. Mahala. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much, Wendy, and all of your beautiful connections. <laughs> Emissaries of the Light Collective and everyone else who has been helping. This has been a beautiful, wonderful webinar. We must <laughs> end it for today, unfortunately, but there's much more to come. So please keep up to date with us, chat with us, be yourself, love yourself, love everyone. All is love. I love that. And with that, <laughs> and with that blessings to everyone, and we will see you all soon. Take care.